Well, good evening, folks. Let's go and get started tonight. 629. 629, if you would, grab your songbook and stand with me. You know, uh, Valentine's are coming up in just a few days. Yeah. People's mind is on love, right? Okay. Okay. We're going to sing about... Uh, love lifted me. Now, I, I don't know if I can do that stuff like Kerry does and lifts himself off the floor, okay? I got a lot more weight to keep mine off, keep mine down, so we'll try to do what we can. Ready? Here we go. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. But nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help. try it. We get the word lifted. I'll try to raise myself up. You guys do it with me. Here we go. Second verse. Oh, my heart to him I give. Ever to him I cling. In his blessed presence live. Ever his praises sing. The love so mighty and so true. Merits my soul's best song. Equal loving service to, to him belong love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted now, before we do the last um, verse there, we usually pick a character about God, and then one of our guys will just pray and thank the Lord for that certain attribute of God, or character of God. So tonight, I think it's pretty much picked it for us. God's love for us, and our love for God. Anybody, just really quickly, popcorn testimony about God's love for you, that you want to praise and thank God. What's God what is it so special to you, the fact that God loves you? Uh, or maybe the fact of privilege we have to love him. Anybody? Unconditional. His love is unconditional for us. Praise God for that, JJ. Something else about God's love for us that we can praise. Yes, Miss Nola. He looks beyond my faults. He looks beyond my faults. And like the song goes, and saw my need. Amen. Praise God for that. Anybody else? Something we can praise the Lord about is love. The Bible says God is love, right? My daughter. Okay, Miss Amy on the piano. His love is pure. His love is pure. It's a holy love. God's love is based on his holiness. If he is not holy, that means he may, not, may or may not tell me the truth. And that means when he tells me he loves me, he may, it may not be that he's telling me the truth. But I know because he's holy and pure, I can trust him when he says he loves me. Right? Okay, something else we can praise God tonight about his love. Anybody? You guys are doing good. We've got some good answers tonight. Anybody? Uh, yes, Elizabeth. He protects, us. he protects us with his love. God's love protects us. Crystal. He forgives. he forgives us because he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave. And God gave his son, and because of that, we can believe and we can be saved and be forgiven. Anybody else? You guys have done real well with this tonight. Good. Okay, Brother Al, would you open the service up in prayer and just thanking the Lord, if you would, about his love. Amen. Amen. One more verse here, the third verse. All right, we'll try to lift it thing again. You ready? I think I'm 
finally getting the hang of it. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you. <laughs> the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. He'll of his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I don't know how to describe it from up here watching you guys like popcorn going up and down and stuff. You may be seated. All right. Some good things happening around this good place. And that's because you're here and those you're watching back home. Um, just a couple of announcements just to kind of keep us all together. Um, a lot of things happening. We had a very precious lady in our church several years ago. Uh, let's see, Dawn and I have been here 11, 12 years. I guess Ms. Hall, Ms. Mary moved up, Mary Hartzell, up to Williamsburg about five, six years ago. Maybe longer than that. Long time. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, there was a sweet Christian lady by the name of Mary Hartzell. Uh, Mary, um, we would visit her quite, quite frequently. My wife and I go over and see her. She lived in Fox Hill area of Hampton. They, they had moved her up to Williamsburg later on and then up to Richmond near where her daughter was. Well, we got word the other day that Mary has gone and graduated on to heaven at 92 years of age. And lady faithful in the church, just loved the Lord. I uh, wish that you could have met her. Some of you did know her. And the funeral is going to be this coming Saturday afternoon. I think, is it 2.30, Miss Hall? Is it 2 or 2.30? I think it's 2.30. We'll find out and let you know definitely. Um, over at our, our Hayden Smith Funeral Home down in Hampton, uh, if you'd like to go. Uh, but that's going to be this coming Saturday. Visitation at 10 o'clock, Saturday morning. And those of you who helped out in the journey for Christmas, through Christmas, with Brother Richard Barrett and his wife and family there at South Keith, they are having a special, I guess you call it luncheon, here at the church at 1230 this Saturday. 1230 this Saturday, those who helped out and they want to just kind of say a word of thanks uh, by treating you to a meal here at the Fellowship Hall this coming Saturday, those who worked in the journey through Christmas. Um, Jay, yes? Okay. Okay, visitation on 5 to 6 on that Friday evening, and at 2 o'clock in the afternoon will be the funeral service there at R. Hayden Smith. Okay, um, Ladies Fellowship, an impromptu, ladies, listen to this one. Impromptu, Ladies Fellowship, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at J.J.'s house, uh, and soup, salad, and something sweet. There you go, that sounds good. Uh, let J.J. know if you're going to be able to make it so they can prepare, okay? That's tomorrow night, impromptu ladies' fellowship, just to get together, ladies, and fellowship. I know you guys love to do that. Um, they're handing out the prayer list, so take a look there with me. And maybe somebody, boy, we got a long prayer list tonight. That we do. That we sure do. Okay. All right, I'm going to need one of you guys to help me in praying. You don't have to pray through the whole list. I just need someone to pray at the end for our prayer time. Anybody, one of our guys, be willing to do that tonight? Um, Eric, would you be willing to? Okay, at the end, we'll do that. Okay. All right, so if you have somebody you'd like to add to the list you didn't get a chance to when you walked in, let's do that at this time. Or you just you want to praise God about. Okay, my wife, Dawn, I am praising God about you. Okay. This is the young lady who has Lyme's disease that lives in Canada. 
she has digressed uh, greatly. Okay. She's about 29, 30 years of age, I believe. This Laura's our daughter Laura is her friend. All right, so if you would, that's about uh, three fourths of the way down the page under Don Charles's name, Vanessa. If you would to pray, that was an urgent prayer request for today. Yes, Joshua. Uh, surgery on Monday. Surgery on Monday. Josh has surgery on Monday. Is that on here? I don't know if that's on here. We'll put it on here. Okay. Pray for Josh. He has surgery this coming Monday. Okay. All right. Something you want to praise God for or something you just want to ask, add to the prayer list tonight? Anybody? Al? Uh, okay. Sandy's mom and also lost family members for Al and Sandy. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Deborah. Yeah, I put it on the prayer list. My brother Scott um, injured his left shoulder. Um, okay, that's on the back of the prayer list at the top there. It's Deborah's, her brother Scott. And he's um, having a problem with not healing, and we've got to do an MRI. Hopefully, Deborah, you will get a shoulder cup. Okay. Okay. We'll pray for definitely for Scott, left shoulder, and healing for that. Amen. Definitely. Anybody else? All right. Uh, yes, Irving. Okay. Let's pray for Josh Wainwright. That's Irving's grandson. Has some health issues we need to really pray for. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, Jackie. Direction and peace. Jackie asking direction and peace. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Don. Yeah, our little grandson, Grayson, has had a, a problem with thrush in the mouth and throat, and it's happened seven times. So it's been kind of a really major thing for us, and so if you would keep, keep him in uh, prayer. Grayson Charles. Okay. Is that it? All right. All right, we're going to, if you would, take your Bible out. And I've got two messages, two 10 or 15 minute messages. And the first one, we're doing our virtues and vices. We'll start with the vice first, and then we'll get right to the virtuous one. And uh, I thought, well, since we're coming up on uh, Valentine's, we'll do something in regards to um, love and on hate. So we'll, our virtue tonight, our vice is going to be hate, and of course the virtue will be love. And I picked two characters in the Bible that I hope will help us to better understand uh, what love is about and what um, also hate is about. We're going to Genesis with this one, this vice. The first one is about Cain and Abel. Of course, you know what happened in the story there. So I'm not going to... Oh, thank you. And we got some missionary things we want to share with you too tonight and some good stuff, okay? All right. In Genesis chapter 4, near the end of the chapter, we'll get in there and hopefully share some thoughts here with you. In the area of hatred, the area of hatred, uh, can a Christian be caught up in hate? Definitely. I have met people who have were caught up in hatred, very much so. And so uh, it, it uh, can destroy your life and destroy those around you if you allow it to take hold. And I'm going to give you some things. I meant to get with uh, Daniel and have it set up to put it on the screen tonight. Forgive me for that. But some of you like to take a few notes. And 
when I get through the, near this end of this first point, about halfway through, I'm going to give you about four or five points that will help us in relation to having hatred in our hearts to keep from it, it taking place in our hearts, okay? Uh, let's, let's start there. I was going to read the whole story, but our time is kind of limited in that. Um, well, let's drop down to verse number 8 of Genesis 4. Uh, now, you remember the story, how they were both to offer sacrifices to the Lord. And Cain's sacrifice he offered from the fruit of the ground. He was a, a farmer, a gardener, if you please. And, of course, Abel was the one that offered. He, had, he was a tender to flocks, to sheep, and he offered an animal sacrifice, which is what God required. Uh, it was a shedding of blood, which was picturing... The sacrifices that one day would be done by the Israelites and one day Jesus at Calvary to be sacrificed and his blood be shed on the cross, right? Well, we know that Cain said, I'm going to handle this a different way. Cain decided, I'm going to offer some fruit of the ground, my vegetables or fruit or whatever he did. He, you know, and that's the way it is. And it's a, it's, it is a mirrored picture of those who try to be saved by works and those who are saved by grace through faith. It's a, one of the greatest pictures in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, in works versus grace and grace versus works. Uh, verse number 8, And Cain uh, talked with his Abel, his brother. <clears throat> now God had, God had already confronted Cain about this. He said, And Cain talked with his Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, in verse number 8 of Genesis 4, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? Of course, God knew exactly where he was. He's looking for a confession, just like he did with uh, Cain's daddy and mom in the garden. Uh, he says, And he said, I know not. Well, that was a lie. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. You are your brother's keeper. You're to be looking out for him too, not just yourself. Selfishness. What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother, brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. And look at what God said is going to happen to this man. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. They'll try to kill me, because I've committed murder, basically. That's what he's saying. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, test, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out, and this is the saddest statement in this whole story. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. You know, a person who dies and goes to hell, that's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Because we know they don't have to if they turn to Christ. Uh, but one of the biggest problems about hell is, God, uh, you leave the presence of the Lord there. There's no more fellowship with God, no more chance to fellowship with God at all. All right, and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Cain knew his wife. She conceived, bare Enoch, and he built a city. This is not the same Enoch that we know of. The ungodly line of Cain versus the godly line of Seth that comes later. Uh, you'll notice some of the names in the genealogies are the same. The devil always tries to copy the godly line. And uses some of those names. Lamech in here. Some of the other names. We're not going to get into all of that tonight. But he said, and unto Enoch. Enoch was on the godly side, was a godly man. But this is an ungodly one. And, born, uh, and unto Enoch was born Irad. And Irad begot Mehujuel, Mehujuel, Methuselah. Methuselah, this is not Methuselah. And Methuselah, but it does kind of sound like it, doesn't it? Begat Lamech. And Lamech, Lamech or Lamech, how you want to say it, took unto him two wives. The name of the one Ada, and the name of the other Zillah, and Ada bare Jabel. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. Uh, and his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal-Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and sister to Tubal-Cain was Naamah. 
And notice this next two verses. Sometimes we skip this. Watch it, how you have a pattern of hatred in your life as a daddy or a mama in the home. If you've got a bad spirit in your home, I can almost, almost guarantee you down the line with your children, you're going to reap what you sow in the home with a bad spirit. If you've got a spirit of hatred, it will lead you to do some things. It'll cause jealousy. It'll cause all kind of bad things in your house. And if it does so, your, one of your children or maybe all of your children will be raised around it. And they could come out acting just like you did. Mm. This is a very important thing. Look what takes place here in verse number 23. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Or Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. Some commentaries say this is two men he's talking about, a regular aged man and then a young man. Others say it's the same man. But nonetheless, he slew him. Where did he learn that from? Great, 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 great granddaddy, Cain. Hmm. Uh, he says, for I have slain a man to my wounding. Now, the word to my wounding, uh, to my wounding. Some say that this is, he was defending self-defense and what he was doing. Um, others may not agree with that. But to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt, if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lemek seventy and sevenfold. What does it mean when Cain be avenged? God said, if any, I'm going to put a mark on you, Cain, and if any man tries to kill you, you will, I will, you will be avenged for that. So in other words, he's getting a little arrogant spirit. What is taking place here with Lamech. He's getting a little arrogant, arrogant spirit. Well, if Cain, if Cain uh, would be protected, surely I would be 70 times 7 protected. Um, learn, a, learn a principle in life in the home. What you sow... You reap the same seed of what you sow. But more than likely, you reap a lot more. Just like one few grains of kernels of corn produces a stalk with several ears on it. The same with any type of sin or vice in our life. If you, don't, if you leave it unchecked, it'll affect not only yourself, it'll affect your whole family. Okay, trying to be a help to us here. Tonight, okay? Let me give you a few thoughts here, and then I'm going to stop on this one about hatred. Uh, of course, Cain depended on his own thinking and his own sacrifice, and it wasn't accepted, and he could have gotten help from his brother Abel, could have got an animal from him and, sa and slew that animal and, and shown it as a sacrifice, right? Um, Abel desired to please the Lord. Cain wanted to do it his way, right? So self was involved. Uh, murder first introduced because Cain... Uh, Cain didn't take the responsibility that God had told him to do. He was supposed to have a blood sacrifice. Uh, he allowed his anger to take over his emotions. And that's what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Hatred then as he takes over and the anger that we have towards, yes, even in this case, a brother to a brother, uh, winds up taking place and it winds up destroying your life and those around you. And yes, can even hurt others. Now, most of us in here are not going to take a gun to shoot one of our loved ones. We hope not. We know that does happen. But in his, his life, murder was first introduced in this world because of hatred. We can't leave those things unchecked. Cain's choice to murder cost him his life, his way of life. He no longer could reap from the ground the things that he had sowed. I bet he had a beautiful garden. I bet he had a beautiful farm. But no longer. He's, now he's a fugitive and a vagabond and has to trample all over the earth. Or at least go out of the garden. He's on the east side of Eden. All right. Uh, Cain's rebellion against the Lord uh, was passed on through his generations down to Lamech. And, of course, Lamech commits murder. Um, let me give you a few things. Principle number one about this story and about hatred. Something we can learn from tonight that maybe it will help us steer clear of having a, a heart that's full of hatred. Um, maybe the reason, let me give you the first thought. Cain uh, didn't want to get a lamb from Abel. 
Maybe it was uh, simply uh, the fact that he thought he'd be beneath his brother. He's the firstborn. You mean I got to go to my second brother and I got to get an animal from him? It's like I'm lowering myself. Be careful when humility is not in your heart. Because if humility is not there, then pride will enter in. And pride can then lead to hatred. Okay? So, but uh, he felt that maybe it would be beneath him to get an animal from his brother. But God gives us all responsibilities, ladies and gentlemen. God gives us all gifts. Everyone in this room has some type of gift that God has given to you. Maybe two different gifts. Maybe a major and a minor gift. And, and, and That's why I'm such a proponent of coming to church. This is a little, I'm going to run a rabbit trail, just very briefly. One of the things God gives to his children and to his church are his people with the gifts that he has given them. And we need to be at God's house in order to exercise those gifts. If you're not here and you have a gift that God has given you to the local church, his church, his body, we're part of his body, he's the head. And when we're not exercising the gifts that God has given us, then what happens? Then the church misses out, the body misses out on the gift that you have to exercise. I want to encourage everybody, come to the house of God. Be in the house of God, because we're here not just to hear, we're here to, to serve each other. Uh, but we are equally important to God in all of our gifts, and sometimes we don't watch out. We can get jealous. Maybe Cain was jealous over Abel because his gift was, no doubt, was accepted by the Lord. Jealousy can lead to hatred also. Number, that was number two. Jealousy can lead to hatred. Number three, Jesus taught us to love our enemies. Now, granted, Abel should not have been an enemy of Cain. And it wasn't Abel's fault. But in Cain's heart, he was like an enemy. But Jesus said, love your enemies. Even if he was an enemy, he still is to love him. Christ's solution is love, not the hatred. The hatred and the jealousy and the pride all empower somebody to take a step beyond. You can't just, it's like Lay's potato chips. You can't eat just one. You get a little jealous of a brother or sister or maybe somebody in your family, and you get a little bit, maybe hatred starts stirring up. Pride's lifting its, its ugly head up. And what happens? It usually takes another step. Unless you're willing to stop the hatred in its tracks. But preacher, you don't know what they've done to me. It may be something bad they've done to you. But stop the hatred in your heart. You're only hurting yourself in, that, in your heart. And then you're hurting your family and other members around you. Number three, love your enemies even if it's some in your own home. <laughs> Number four, hatred is contagious. <sighs> what did God say to Cain? Why is thy countenance, thy face, fallen? He said, if you'll do right, Cain, if you'll offer the blood sacrifice like I require and Abel did, then you will be accepted. There's a way out of this thing. Some people say, well, I'd rather just be angry, be hatred, hate somebody. And oh, No, 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 no. There is always a way out if you accept God's way out. Yeah, man, preacher. There's a way out if you accept God's way out. But if you try to handle it in the flesh like Cain did, it's going to cause you problems and more heartache in your home. And it is contagious. Hatred is contagious. <laughs> I've told it before, I remember one time I would come home from Chick-fil-A, I had worked all day, I was tired as could be, and Dawn was there, and she was fixing supper, and the kids were there when they were younger, and uh, man, I just was in a sour, bad attitude. The flesh had taken over, and I'd let it take it over. And I got on Dawn about something that was just little and petty, and isn't that the way it usually happens? And then I noticed at supper table, uh, something happened. She started attacking the kids. And it was like a domino effect. What you sow is what you reap. Okay, 
right? Hatred is contagious. People would much rather dwell on the negative than they would on the positive. We always love to hear the dirt on somebody. We always love to hear, we always like to be mad and angry about something all the time. Why? Why do we like that? Okay, look up here at me. Why do we like things like that? Because it is of the flesh. It appeals to the flesh. The flesh likes to be hatred. The flesh loves to hurt. The flesh loves to strike back. The flesh loves to say things it ought not say. The flesh loves to get someone else to come along and get them hating, too. Mm. Maybe we learn a little bit tonight on why our homes sometimes are not as sweet as they need to be. Because we dwell on selfish pride, we dwell on hatred, we dwell on jealousy, we dwell on making it so that we want someone to agree with us in our bad spirit. Well, I'm not getting a lot of amens tonight. Anyway, that's okay. That's all right. We'll try to help, help us all, including the preacher. And number five, it's a domino effect on our posterity. If you have a hatred, if you have a bad spirit and you've got a, a hatred spirit in your home, and men, men, listen up very closely. It, it, you are the major key figure. You will cause a domino effect in the home, I guarantee you. <clears throat> but you don't have to. <clears throat> Show the love of God to your wife and to your children and wives back to your husband, to your kids, and kids back to the parents. Number six, always keep in mind, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. The Lord will take care of all those issues. Why don't you yield it over to him and stop trying to have hatred and strike out at others, okay? All right, Amy, I need you to go to the piano. I need the song. I did not get the number before service. I need the song, Oh, How I Love Jesus. I feel like singing that tonight. Oh, How I Love Jesus. You guys want to stand with me, grab a songbook, and we'll sing that one tonight. We sang about love, God's love lifting us in the beginning of the service. Now we're going to sing about our returning our love back to him, okay? 627. 627. That sounds like a good number. 627. So let's get rid of the hatred and let's add the love of God to our soul. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Oh, yeah, that's just a couple of pages from where we were. Here we go. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. <coughs> oh, <coughs> oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells just what the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Last verse, here we go. At, um, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second, Amy. Let's do the third verse. I'm going to get some of you to see if you can do. Okay, most of you just sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. I need some people to do a different version of the, of the chorus with me. It's called, and I'll, I'll just sing the chorus. Just do the chorus. Amy. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. Me, he is so wonderful because he first loved me. I need some folks who are willing to do to me, he is so wonderful. All right, Al? Okay, Eli? Somebody need a few more to do that, and the rest will do Oh, I Love Jesus. All right? All right, thank you, Eric. All right, third verse, here we go. Let's see how it sounds. It tells me what my Father hath in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, he'll sunshine all the way. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful.
wonderful to me. <coughs> Say first love me. And we'll go back to the normal way. You guys did good. All right, fourth verse. It tells of one whose loving heart in its sorrow bears a part. Because he first loved me. All right, sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Uh, give us the first note on O. Oh. Mm, oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Sing the chorus a cappella. Here we go. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Do you love him? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Whew. Tell you what, Al, I'm going to have you come and do offering just a minute for me. Just give me a little break here. Okay. Carrie couldn't be here tonight. All right. Um, I tell you what, Eli, can you go and get me a bottle of water, please? I didn't get a water beforehand. Okay, I need, uh, need to call the church just for a few moments to a business meeting, all right? Something good, something, nothing bad, something really good. In a couple weeks from now, we're going to have our annual business meeting. Some good news to report to you then, too, okay? Um, but something that is pressing that we need to get it done tonight, um, Yorktown and VDOT, Virginia Department of Transportation, are wanting to put a, an ease, take a little bit of an easement of a little piece of our property on the front up here at the corner connected to the donut shop and make a cross walk across the highway. How many of you know that we have a walking path at our church? How many knew that? Uh -huh, that's what I thought. Right out in front of our church on our property is a walking path. Thank you, Eli. It goes from the, this end of the property to that end of the property. It has been there since Pastor Hall, they made Pastor Hall put it in, and the church put it in 18 years ago. And we have never heard from them since. But they are willing, wanting to do this, and we are finding, folks, if, if you're here during church during the day, there are a few people down on this side who are starting to use our walking path, believe it or not, as they have to work sometimes at Food Line and other places across the street. Of course, the fact that we're not far from the Langley Air Force housing, there may be some by chance that may want to just walk over from there to us. We don't know. But they're just asking for an easement. They're not asking for the land. They're just asking for a simple easement <coughs> to put a, a place where you walk across and land right here on our property at the front corner. If you want to know exactly what it looks like, they've marked it off with white paint. It's more really in the wooded section right at the front near the highway between the donut shop and our our property. So it's not a lot. Um, they're just asking for an easement to do that. Um, in order to do that, we have to have our trustees in line. And you know, we have Brother Rick as a trustee and also Al. Uh, several years ago when we added Rick, we talked to our lawyers and they said, well, if you're not doing any, uh, trustees deal with the purchasing and the selling and dealing with land and buildings. They sign paperwork. Okay. Well, at the time we had no need for take it to a judge to get it approved. Well, in order to do this, we have to have uh, Rick taken to the judge on behalf of our lawyers to, be, to solidify that he is a trustee with the church. He is one. We voted on him years ago, okay? We just have had, never had a need because we have the land and the buildings and so forth. Well, this has come up, and then our bylaws state that we have to have three trustees, Okay. Um, I talked with Brother Al, and he's a trustee, and also Rick and myself, we're talking. I'm not a trustee, but I talked with Brother Brian Frederick, and he is prayed about it, and he is willing to uh, take that third position to be a trustee in order to do so. So tonight, what I'm asking of you, two things. One is to, we do need to do this no matter what we do, whether we do the land or not. We do need to have a third trustee because the bylaws do state that, and our lawyers have now shared that with us. Uh, and they, he will be presented to a judge just like 
Brother Rick's name would be presented to a judge. The cost is minimal. I think the total may be $300, $400. I'm not exactly sure um, that our lawyers will take care of, the, the church's lawyers. And we'd like to entertain a motion to have um, Brian be placed as a trustee with the church. Uh, do we have a motion to do so? Okay, Joshua raised his hand over here. All right, uh, do we have a second in, in so? Okay, Al, second. All right, is there any questions in regard to just the trustee part? We did find out through the lawyers we have to have a third trustee because, again, the bylaws state it. Okay. All in favor of, of doing so, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Same motion? Okay. All right, thank you, church. And then what we need you to do is to give permission, once these men are placed before the judge and so forth, that they can sign the paperwork to give the, small, to give the easement so that we can get this crosswalk. I think it will be a blessing to the church. I really do. It does not, um, there's no cost involved to it all. So, and we are not giving them the land. We're just giving them an easement to connect to our, our walking path that we already had 18 years ago. Yes, question, Deborah. It's right there at that section. <coughs> it won't be much. It will not be much that I know of. Will they turn off the branches so you can see farther down the road? That might help. It might definitely help because it is right at that section, right near the front. You're welcome to look. They, they came and spray painted it just so we could know. And I should have brought this before the church sooner so you could see it. But they just did it recently. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I guess what we're saying is, uh, we'd like to entertain a motion to let VDOT and Yorktown uh, have a section there at the front as a, a uh, connection for a walking across a crosswalk coming across from the other side of the highway connecting to our, our, our uh, bike wa walking path. I'd like to entertain a motion to do that. Ray, all right. Second, Jonathan, all right. Any other questions that you might have? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, the same? Aye. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you. I appreciate that very much. And uh, we will get on that and get that done very quickly. Again, we'll have a, a regular business meeting in about two weeks. We would have waited until then, but VDOT and Yorktown are wanting to move forward and want to get this done. Okay. Okay. Al, come and do the offering because I am worn out, folks. I'm a one-man show tonight. All right, if our ushers will take their places. Brother Rick, will you pray over the offering, please? guys got a letter there about our missionaries, okay? Let's just take and read one of these tonight, and we'll have prayer for them. Uh, I'm on page two on the back page. Joel and Noel Smothers family, and they're in Brazil. We support them have for, for several years now. They're a young couple, and they're doing a bang-up job there. And some things that we need to pray, and I appreciate Connie Mixon. Connie takes our prayer letters, condenses them, picks out the really special things that we can go through, and I hope that you'll take this and use it 
and uh, be praying for them. One of the things, we don't just give to missionaries, we try to pray for them. All right? <clears throat> it says, major prayer needed. Joel's two-year visa expired in mid-November. This is done through the federal police, and for some reason is taking extra time for approval, and now has expired, so we really do need to pray about that. Despite contact with a lawyer over the last three months, it is still in process, and they are unsure if they can stay in the country. So we definitely need to pray for them. Uh, their lawyer assures them it should not be an issue for them to stay as long as they are actively attempted to renew, but pray it gets renewed soon. The praise in this, in this uh, prayer letter, they learned in November that a new baby boy is expected. Pray for, jo for Noel as she must manage medication for her blood sugar. Okay, so pray for her. A picture is over here, I believe, on that right section there. If you notice in our pictures that Jackie and Daniel and different ones did, and Amy, um, they're done by continents. Uh, so you see some blank ones up there. None's, nobody's gone AWOL, okay? Uh, we, we just do that so we, as we add, as we go along. We do have a few more we're still trying to put up. But they're done by continents, and I believe South America is over in this area. Because I, I walk this, ladies and gentlemen. I walk the auditorium at times. I pray. I read the Bible. I sing. Nobody hears me but God, but that's Okay. Unless Brother Daniel yells and says, shut up, preacher. <laughs> and I'll go by, and sometimes I will pray for each one of those pictures as I go by. I might pick up on three because I might walk fast or I might walk slow. But I'll pick up on pictures, and I pray for the Robertsons. And I go by there, and I'll pray for other ones. You know, and all of them. I, I usually pray for all of them as I go through. Um, get to know your missionaries better and to pray for them. And ladies... Um, Get, to, get a burden for the missionary wives, you know. Uh, a lot of them are on, by themselves on the field, and uh, it's a hard time. So pray, pray for them, if you would. Okay. Uh, did I get it all done? I think that's about it. Okay. All right. Let's turn our Bibles, if we would, to the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth. Amy, would you go back to the piano for me? Okay. I want to try to sing a song tonight, just a couple verses of a song that I have enjoyed down through the years. And Amy, you're going to have to help me on the page number, The Love of God. 29. 29, thank you. How many of you remember this song? It's a great song. The Love of God. We talked about God's love for us, the love of God. If you want to, you can open your hymn book and look there with me, and I'm, I'm going to try to do it as a, a special tonight as a solo, and just kind of listen, listen to the words. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell it goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell the guilty pair bowed down with care god gave his son to win his erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. I love this third verse. Could we with think the ocean fill and were the skies a parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above Would drain the ocean dry Nor could the scroll contain the whole Though stretched from sky to sky Look at the second verse there. I'll get you guys to sing it with me. Ready? Here we go. 
When years of time shall pass away And earthly thrones and kingdoms fall On rocks and hills and mountains call God's love so sure shall still endure All measure less and strong Redeeming grace to Adam's race Send an angel song All right, let's go to the virtue in the Bible. Virtue, what kind of virtue are you talking about, preacher? All right, well, let me get over there with you, okay? Having a good virtue, the virtue of love, and now having the love and teaching us from God's Word about God's love, okay? Bear along with me, folks. God's love to us. Look at, at Ruth, the book of Ruth, chapter number 1. Again, for sake of time, I'm not going to read the whole story. You guys know about Ruth and her two sons, Malon and Chilion, and uh, her husband, Elimelech. And they had left Israel to go over to the far country and to the wrong place. And as they do so, they leave the will of God. You know, be careful sometimes. Um, take note. Uh, they were without bread in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is known as the house of bread. Uh, they were out without bread, and they left Bethlehem. And sometimes when we leave the place that we think, okay, I'm handling this right, there's no bread here, uh, so I'm taking my family, I'm getting out of here. Well, hold on, be careful. God knows the end from the beginning. God knows whether the bread's coming in this week, and God knows whether it's coming in next year. So be careful in making the wrong type of moves. And Limelech took his family out of where God put him, and took him to a place where he should never have gone to. Malon and Chilean wound up marrying women uh, that were not of the Lord and not of God's and not of the Israelites. And in doing so, the story goes on. Malon and Chilean wound up dying. Malon was the husband to a Ruth. Excuse, yes, to Ruth. And Naomi, the mother-in-law, now her husband dies. The two sons die, and all she has now is the two daughters-in-law. And you know the rest of the story. They, she says to them, you guys, you need to go back, stay with your parents, go back to your homes here in this land. And, 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 cause I, and she says, my name is bitter. When she comes back to Bethlehem, she winds up going back to Bethlehem because she hears this bread. But she, when she gets there, do you remember what she said to the people? Don't call me Naomi, which was a special good positive term. Don't call me Naomi, but call me Mara. For my name, Mara, means bitter. She had a bad spirit. Some people look overlook that about Naomi. But she did have a bad spirit. And because of that, uh, she comes back home. And, and in spite of that, of course, Ruth cleaves to her mother-in-law. Naomi, I mean, excuse me, uh, the other uh, daughter-in-law kisses her and goes back to her own family and own kin. Um, uh, let's look at verse there, verse number uh, 14 of chapter 1. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah, that's the other daughter-in-law, kissed her mother-in-law, Naomi. But Ruth clave unto her. Look at the different things as God uses his word to say these things. God, Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law sister has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee. Or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And I love the next statement. And thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also. If aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her. Then she left speaking unto her. So let's just give you a few thoughts here on love. What's, lo what's real love about? What is biblical love about? I think you got one of the most beautiful pictures in all the Bible found here in this story of the love that Ruth has towards her mother-in-law. 
And then, of course, she winds up marrying Boaz as she gets back over, goes with her over into that, back to Bethlehem. Boaz is a, is a special man, and God uses him greatly here. Uh, so he's part of our story also. Um, as she comes back to the land, you know the story. Uh, Ruth, Ruth's character, I think, goes far beyond. Because Ruth is the one who's going to start working. As they get back home, uh, Naomi is not working. She's older now. And so she's going to try to take care of her mother-in-law. So her mother-in-law says, all right, okay, so there's a place I know that a man's what we call a near kinsman redeemer. And you can go work in his fields. And she goes to work in his fields. And you know, Boaz haps as it was to light upon her. It happened, just so happened. And he sees her. And uh, he says to his guys who are working in the fields, he says, I want you to leave, and I love this phrase, it's a whole message in itself. I want you to leave handfuls on purpose. <laughs> handfuls on purpose. Boy, he's going to take care of Naomi, going to take care of Ruth. Ruth does so. She works hard. You know, most of the time in those days, in Bible times, they would leave the corners of the field unreaped. And if a person who didn't have a lot, which Naomi did not, uh, she's coming home poor. And Ruth coming home poor, or coming to her home. And so what do they do? She's, she, the, boy, I say, I want you to leave handfuls on purpose, not just let them glean the edges of the field, the corners of the field. I want you to leave some in the field. As you're going along, just drop some big handfuls. Isn't that the way the Lord does for us? Yes, he does. He drops so much for us. Uh, this man wanted to, uh, to come and to take care of her. And, of course, you know the story. She lies at his feet one night there in the granary and um, tells him that he's the nearest kinsman as far as they know. The story goes on where they find out there was a, one man who was a closer kinsman redeemer, and he wanted the land. Boaz approached him and said, now, you've got to be able to purchase, to get this land, but you also have to be willing to marry, uh, to marry uh, Ruth and to raise up seed to Malon. And that's what they would do. Well, he, wanted, he was willing to buy the land, but he was not willing to marry Ruth, the Bible talks about. So, it then falls to the lot of Boaz, and Boaz purchases the land, and, of course, marries uh, Ruth to raise up seed to the name of Malon. Uh, the Lord goes on to her. But look at the loyalty of this dear woman. Her personality, her character is so, so special. Um, and because of that, she, she knows, she understands what love is about. She shows biblical love. She decides to take a chance and go by faith. And she go back with Naomi. But Naomi was very bitter because Ruth persisted to show that love to her. Uh, she came to trust Ruth and to take care of her. And that's what love does. And she was a woman who had a work ethic. She was willing to not be lazy, but to work. And, uh, and then she was awarded for that with the handfuls on purpose. And then later to marry Boaz and the, the kinsman redeemer. And so what happens? You know the story. The story is that uh, Ruth and Boaz are in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Brian, you have to correct me on this if I'm wrong. I believe in the lineage that we have listed in Matthew and in Luke. There are three women that are listed in the lineage of Jesus Christ, and I didn't take time to look this up, it's just coming to my mind. There are three ladies, special ladies, and they were all Greeks or Gentiles. But they're part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. And the name Boaz means integrity, responsible, and kind. Every dear lady who loves the Lord wants a husband who loves the Lord. And she winds up getting one, and I think a lot of it's because she was that type of old godly woman. And she said, your land will be my land. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. She made her choice. And the God of Israel was her God. 
And he showed, she showed forth that love. Let me give you a few thoughts. What is true love? Number one, it's a choice. For God so loved that he gave. God chose us. God chose to, uh, to love us. And the biggest truth about love is that it is a choice. Number two, uh, the feelings that we, you know, when people talk about love and stuff like that nowadays, we think of lust, we think of infatuation, we think of other things like that, but we don't think of what really true love is about. And true love is not based on feelings. You might have feelings because you do love, and hopefully you do, but biblical love is, is not feeling, because um, feelings can flee away. I've dealt with couples before. Well, I don't love him anymore. Well, I don't love her anymore. Well, okay, I can understand that. I don't feel like loving them. We are such a feel, touchy-feely society. When God says, I don't want you walking by feelings, the feelings will come, but I want you to walk by faith in what my word says. You do what is right, and then the feelings can come later. Hmm. We don't like to wait. We're very impatient. We're the McDonald's Chick-fil-A generation. It's got to be done right now or yesterday. Okay? But feelings are fleeting. But biblical love, number three, is unselfish love. It puts others ahead of yourself. Um, it may require you to sacrifice your own desires on behalf of another, of another person. And that's what she does. She sacrifices her own desires. I'm going to go. I'm going to take care of my mother-in-law. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back with her to her country. I'm going to be there with her and support her in whatever we have to do. And her God's going to be my God. That's biblical love. It's an unselfish type of love. And when we show biblical love, uh, we place the happiness of the other person ahead of our own happiness. We place the needs of the other person ahead of our own needs. Oh, how many times have I... Well, my needs are not getting met in my life in my, with my husband or my wife. Well, I understand. I know we have needs, and God designed us for needs. And yes, they do need to be done in our, in our lives. And I'm not just talking about physical needs either, folks. Uh, there's emotional needs. There's spiritual needs. There's mental needs. Uh, and those things do need to be met. But you've got to realize that you are there to meet the needs of the other person. Ooh, we don't want to hear that one. But that's what really love is about. God met the need of our heart through salvation when it's, he had to sacrifice his own son. And he did that even when we were in rebellion and sinning against him. I don't know any greater love in all the world than that. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture of what real love is all about. Biblical love sacrifices is unselfish. It may not be easy. Number four, biblical love may not be easy, especially when you've got to put the needs of someone else ahead of, of yourself. I've told this story before, but I think it bears repeating tonight, about the, the dear Christian wife who had an unsaved husband, and he loved to hunt. And he got his buddies together. They went out hunting. They come back at the house about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And he invited his buddies into the house. And they said, we can't go in. Your wife's probably sleeping. And he said, no, I want you to come in because I'm going to make my wife get up and fix us a big breakfast. And but, fellas, she's going to do it with a smile on her face. And she's going to serve us. And they went through that. And she did so. And she smiled. And she served them. And one of the guys spoke up and said, ma'am, I don't understand this. My wife surely would not have done anything like this. Why in the world are you doing this? And she said these words. She said, because I love my husband, and I want him to be saved, and I want him to go to heaven. But he's been very obstinate and does not want to know the Jesus that I love and doesn't want to go to heaven with me. And I figure that this is the best he'll ever get. Tomorrow, when you go to work and you deal with a lost person, have a little compassion. Because you might be dealing with somebody who's going to wind up in hell for eternity.
Number five. <clears throat> Love is also given even when it is not easy, like we said. But we cannot be a picture of Jesus Christ to this whole world if we don't show them some love. One of the greatest things you can do in your witnessing, and I hope you are witnessing, one of the greatest things you can do in witnessing is showing love to people. As the old statement it goes, a lot of people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And that's true. You want to win somebody to Christ? Pour the love of God on them. Just like that wife did. Pour the love of God on them. What did Jesus teach us in John 13, 35? This shall, all, this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one towards another. The characteristic of the love of God in your life will do and take you go much farther. Just like the evil hatred of Cain went far, the love of God in your heart and your life shed abroad to your family, to your church family, to those at the job site, or at school, wherever you go. Be filled with the love of God because that's going to make a difference and you're going to reap much more because of it. And that's how we are to be a witness of Christ. And that's how the lost will know that you are his disciple. That's what Jesus said. All right. Let's get our prayer list out and we'll have time of prayer tonight. Okay. Don't forget to pray for Joel and Noel sm Smothers to Brazil. We don't forget to get pray for them. Okay. Eric, you going to be our guy to pray tonight at the end? Folks, if you can, you can pray at your seat or you can pray here at the altar, welcome you to the altar. And then as he's praying, I want you us to continue silently to pray for these folks on the list. Um, and then we'll have a, just a few minutes in the beginning of uh, Silent prayer to the Lord as a church family we go together and pray. Okay?
Dear Heavenly Father, um, we thank you for this day, and uh, uh, Lord, we we come before your throne, Lord, and and uh, we humble ourselves before you, Father. Uh, none of us are worthy, I especially. Lord, there's many prayers on this list. Lord, we pray, um, especially for those who have friends and family who are in need of salvation, Lord. Lord, that you would move, uh, move in their lives, move in the people around them. Wake them up, Lord, that you would humble them and that you would uh, use us as well to reach the lost, Lord, and that you would help us to show your love uh, through us, Lord, uh, that you'd uh, just bless us with the humility and uh, the love and discernment that we need to help those uh, see that not only that you exist, but you are God. Uh, and that they need a Savior, Lord. Lord, we pray uh, not only for the salvation, but for the health of many of the individuals in here. Um, there's cancers and so many different things, Lord. Uh, there's people in need, people who need direction, people who need peace, um, people who just need a glimpse of hope. Lord, we pray that you would just, um, you would comfort all of them, Lord, all, all on this list. Lord, that you'd, um, you'd fill us all with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and just that you'd remove just the obstacles, the distractions, the um, just any any evil spirits trying to hinder us from um, doing your will uh, and seeking what you have for us, Lord, um, in our own selfishness, Lord, in our own will, uh, in our own pride from getting in the way of your will, Lord. Um, pray that, Lord, that you'd um, bless this church. Uh, with safety and a head of protection around us, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray that you give us boldness to share the gospel. And that you help us to rely on you more than um, on our own intuition, our own wisdom, our own discernment, money whatever worldly things that we're putting our trust in, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to realize what those things are and that you'd, you know, help us to see that our focus needs to be on you and not on our selfish desires, Lord. And uh, pray that you just lead us and guide us in every, in every way we need to go, Lord, and that we could see where you're guiding us, Lord. Um, we, we thank you for all those here and... Uh, we pray that you'd bless those who are watching and um, help us all just to get through another week and just help help us to have that peace and comfort that you give and that only you can give, Lord. Um, and just, Lord, just, we need you every day. And uh, I just thank you for all you do and thank you for your blessings. Uh, thank you for all that you've blessed us with, Lord, for our families, our friends, um, you know, being able to have food on the table, a place to live, uh, and just all the little things of life that we take for granted, Lord, we thank you for them. And uh, Lord, just help us to seek your kingdom first, and we trust you'll provide the rest. And give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Stay there, Eric. <clears throat> um, you can look up this way. Uh, we're praying for a, a place for Eric and Lauren and Elena to live in. They have, he's gotten a job at Smithfield Foods in the logistical division, and they need a house or an apartment to rent 
or if you know of something, please, please talk to this young man and to, to Lauren and let them know. Those of you watching by Facebook Live, that uh, keep your ears and eyes open to help us uh, do so. Okay? Amen, brother. Amen. Um, don't forget, tomorrow night, JJ's. What time was that, JJ? Was that 6 o'clock? Impromptu Ladies Fellowship, okay? So, Miss Amy, where, she, where did our guest of honor go? Come up here. Okay. I'm going to let you explain what we're doing, okay? Um, so, Crystal Fox is in the back. Um, she is, they're moving out to Texas here soon. Um, not quite sure when, just soon. So we have a cake in the back, and um, it says, we miss you, or we, we, we will miss you. Um, just a, a little goodbye party. She'll still be around for a couple more weeks and everything, but um, we just want to say goodbye to her, um, like a really nice goodbye, because um, when she goes, it's going to be abrupt, okay? So um, just... Uh, enjoy the fellowship. There's a big cake back there. I think Belle has some animal balloons or something for the kids, so enjoy. All right. Well, go ahead and stand with us, and we'll pray and thank the Lord for the cake. Amen. And for the fellowship, we're going to greatly miss Kyle, already missing Kyle, and then missing Crystal, as God is leading them to Texas, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken, to Fort Hood, and will be heading out very soon, and we want to be able to do this to spend a few minutes with her. Okay? Father, bless now our time of fellowship together. Pray for Kyle and Crystal and uh, their family, that, Lord, you would bless them, and God, protect and keep them safe. And, Lord, as you move them to Texas, that, Lord, that I know there will be a blessing to, to many. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Next time, Al, I'm going to get you to help me. <laughs> I burned myself out tonight.